dictated how long Noah's confinement was. But what we would like to do this morning is consider when the confinement was over. You see, most of us have stepped outside of our confinement just a little bit. You're here this morning. Some of you have been going to work, maybe to the store, and we're thankful for that. There are some still viewing from home who don't feel comfortable getting out yet, and we certainly understand that. But things are starting to change just a little bit, and we hope to get back to what we might call normal sooner rather than later. And so as we think about the first confinement and what Noah was going through, is it possible that we can take a similar situation and see the situation that we're in and make some application? That we can learn something from Noah's confinement and specifically when Noah's confinement was over. I think there, there is, there are, there are four lessons this morning and then this particular sermon will be yours. Number one, when Noah's confinement was over, he worshipped the Lord. He worshipped the Lord. If you have your Bibles there, we are still in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 15. Then God spoke to Noah saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you. Verse 18, So Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. Every animal, every creeping thing, every bird and whatever creeps on the earth according to their families went out of the ark. And verse number 20, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. How wonderful it is that Noah was able to do that and worship the Lord when his confinement was over. In fact, notice as well here in verse number 20, you see similar language that you are familiar with, and that he took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Now, we're not going to learn about clean animals in a sense until we get to the law of Moses, but apparently Noah and God had some kind of understanding. He knew what that was, and he is going to offer clean beasts. And of course, maybe most importantly, we notice in verse number 21, his worship was a sweet aroma to God. And the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. You see, when we think about the worship of God, and Noah's relationship with God, it would seem to us that while Noah was in the ark, God did not forget Noah. But as well, as we think about not only that time in the ark, but as Noah and his family step off that ark, not only did God not forget Noah, but Noah did not forget God. Worship is certainly a privilege. Psalm 95 and verse number 6 Psalm 95, 6. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. We think about the picture that is painted for us in Revelation chapter 4 and verses 8 and 11. Those who are before the throne of God say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. Maybe some, some of us appreciate the privilege of worship a little more now than we did before. Now let me ask you a question. Is it possible that while Noah and his family were on the ark that maybe they could have sang a few songs? Is it possible that while they were on the ark maybe they could have prayed to God? Well certainly so. I know what they didn't do. I don't think they did any puzzles. I don't think they played Monopoly together or whatever you might have been doing during this time. But it's possible that they could have worshipped God. But don't you think that Noah was maybe just a little fired up to get off the ark and be able to worship God the way that he knew how to worship God? I missed our assemblies. And chances are you have as well. The psalmist again says in Psalm 122, in verse number 1, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And this is not the house of the Lord. This building is not sacred in of itself. The house of the Lord is the church. We're thankful to be together and to have an opportunity to assemble together and worship the God of heaven. Our worship must come from the heart. It must be something that we offer unto God. And it is something that we do not need to take for granted. We think about that privilege that is stated in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 7. That on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. It's, it's a short sentence. 
And it's really even a short time in our lives that we would come together on the first day of the week and meet here. It's not much when we think about the grand scheme of our week. But how important it is. What a great privilege and honor. Noah did not forget God. And God did not forget Noah. What a wonderful relationship and opportunity that we have to worship the God of heaven. And when Noah's confinement was over, first of all, he worshiped the Lord. Number two, this morning, when Noah's confinement was over, we noticed that he was a blessed man. Look at me in your Bible at Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 1. Genesis 9, 1. Noah was a blessed man. It says, very simply, so God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. You see, what's interesting to notice about this is after his confinement was over, Noah was a blessed man. But, but wouldn't it be sufficient for us to say that God blessed Noah before the confinement? And God blessed Noah during the confinement. And God blessed Noah after his confinement. God blessed Noah and his sons. And what we would like to think about here at this particular point is four ways, four concrete ways that we can look at from the text and see that Noah was a blessed man. But of course, I hope that you'll look at it and think about your life as well. Four blessings. Number one, one of the blessings that Noah received was that Noah's family survived. Noah's family survived the flood. We see in Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 18, so Noah went out and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him. It's hard sometimes to count all the numbers depending on what news station you look at, the websites you visit. It's hard to kind of keep track. People count things in different ways. But by count this morning, as I can tell, we are close to or around 393,000 people worldwide who have died due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the United States alone, we are over 100,000, around 111,000 people who have lost their lives due to complications from the COVID-19 virus. When we think about Noah and his family surviving the flood, most people didn't survive the flood. And unfortunately, some people, and many people we might say, won't survive this particular pandemic. If you know someone that you, that you have lost or, or someone you're aware of who has lost their life due to this, it is, it's tragic. We are very sad because of that. But Noah was blessed because his family was able to survive. And we are blessed as this confinement comes to an end, at least so far, to be able to, be able to have made it this far through the COVID-19 pandemic. The second blessing that we might mention is that Noah still had his health. Look at me in your Bible, Genesis chapter 9. And verse number one, so God blessed Noah and his sons, and he said to them. So I would submit that Noah could still hear, first of all. Look in Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 13. God says, I set my rainbow in the cloud, and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. What does that tell you? Noah could still see when the confinement was over. Look in your Bible as well at Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 25. Then Noah said. One of the blessings that Noah had after the confinement was over was that he still had his health. He could still see, he could still hear, and he could still talk. One of the lessons that we have taken from this pandemic so far is to appreciate the little things. To look around us and be thankful for what we have when some things have been taken away from us. Noah was a blessed man because he still had his health. We have a long list this morning, and it could go, we could go all morning listing those who need our prayers because of health concerns. But many of us still have our health, and we can be thankful for that. Number three, Noah was a blessed man because God communicated with him. God communicated with him. Notice in Genesis chapter 9, beginning in verse number 1, all the way through verse number 7. For the sake of time this morning, we won't read all of this. But notice that God says to Noah and his sons, and he begins to give him a long list of instructions. Noah was blessed because God communicated with him. 
In these first seven verses of chapter 9, God is giving Noah and his sons instructions on how they should behave. What the proper conduct is and how that they should act going forward. He gives them, gives them instructions on what they should do. We're thankful Psalm 119 and verse 105. Psalm 119, 105 reminds us that thy word, God's word, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God has given us instructions. We had them before the pandemic, we've had them during, and we will have them after. But we can be thankful that God communicates with us in that way. God communicated with Noah in these first seven verses by giving instructions, but he also, notice in verses 8 through 17 of chapter 9, gives him the covenant or the promise. He talks about the bow, the rainbow that would be set in the clouds, and he makes this covenant promise with Noah and with all the earth of what he would not do again in this particular fashion. We are thankful that God communicated with Noah, and we're thankful that he communicates with us by his word. Noah was blessed this, in this way, and we are as well. But then finally, under this second point, Noah was a blessed man because he had a job to do. He had a job or work to do. Notice in Genesis chapter 9, in verse number 20, and Noah began to be a husband or a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Now, for many of us sometimes, our jobs are not exactly blessings, but to be able to have a job or work to do, it is a blessing. We are thankful to be able to provide for our families. We think about the New Testament, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 8. But if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is an infidel or an unbeliever. Strong words there from the Apostle Paul to Timothy about the job that we should be doing, the work that we should be doing. The idea that we as followers of God should work is not new. If you're still there in Genesis, you can actually go back to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 15 and notice that Adam and Eve had instructions. At the end of verse number 15, God tells them to tend or work or dress the garden and keep it. They had a job as well. We have jobs to do, and many of us are still blessed to have those. Now, once again, it's a little hard to get a figure on the numbers, but unfortunately during this pandemic, the numbers have been up to or close to around 40 million jobs that have been lost in these United States of America. Not everyone is blessed to say they've been able to keep their job, and if, if you have been through that kind of struggle, we are sorry for that. We would help in any way that we can. Many people have lost their job. But Noah was blessed because he still had a job and he still had work to do. For us as Christians, even if maybe you are retired or maybe you have lost your job the way that it was before the pandemic, we still have work to do. Strong words from the New Testament again. We think about Paul writing those in Thessalonica, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. You don't work, you don't eat. Pretty simply said to me, pretty simply understood Noah had work to do. Work is a blessing. Let us not take our blessings for granted. As we often say from this pulpit, do you mean it when you sing it? Or when we sang it a few moments ago. Count your many blessings. We are a blessed people. We think about the words again to those in, in Thessalonica, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything give thanks. Let us not take our blessings for granted. God was good before the flood. God was good during the flood. God was good after the flood. And the same is true with the COVID-19 pandemic. We are thankful that our God is good. And we are a blessed people, even though we sometimes struggle in this life. Number three this morning. We are thankful that after the confinement is over, God is still in control. Again, in relation to Noah, when Noah's confinement was over, God was still in control of the universe. Question, who was in control before the flood? God was. Who was in control during the flood? God was. Who was in control after the flood? God was. Let's, let's go through a few verses. I, I like this. This outline the way this is put. Let's look at a few verses together. Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 17. Who is it that sent and caused the flood? 
God speaking says, Behold, I myself am bringing flood waters on the earth. It wasn't Mother Nature that got upset. It wasn't some freak of nature that happened. God sent the flood. Go forward to chapter 8, verses 15 and 16. Who is the one who told Noah to exit? It's God that told Noah to exit the ark. Look at verses 21 and 22. Who is it? This is an interesting passage that assures man there will still be seasons. Look at verse number 22. God says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer and day and night shall not cease. God was the one and is the one who says there will still be seasons. Notice in chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, who is the one that sets the criteria for our conduct? Who is the one that tells us how to live? It's God. Look in verse 11 of chapter 9. Who is the one who said there would be no more flood? God is the one who said there would be no more flood. And look at verses 13 through 16. Who is the one with the authority to say, here is what the rainbow means? God. It's not just a pretty thing in the sky. It's not just a theme or a logo for some so-called movement here in these United States. It is God who says what the rainbow means. It is God who calls the flood, who allowed Noah to exit, who assures the seasons that are before us. God was and is still in control of the universe. Before, during, and after the flood. Before, during, and after any pandemic that has come, and may you come. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse number 3, the Hebrew writer says it is God who upholds all things by the word of His power. And the psalmist again in Psalm 24 and verse number 1, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. We can be thankful. As Noah was after his confinement that God is still in control of the universe. He is still the great sovereign of the world around us. But then fourth and finally this morning, as we think about lessons from the confinement, Noah, after his confinement was over, still had to live in a world of wickedness. When Noah's confinement was over, he still had to live in a world of wickedness. We know about the flood, that it cleansed the earth, so to speak. But it did not remove man's tendency to sin against God. In fact, we're very familiar with the verse, Genesis chapter 6 and verse number 5. Before the flood, then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his, of his heart was only evil continually. We might translate that in our words and say that the evil was off the charts. The evil was unbelievable that was going on in the world at that time. And we see here just a few pages in our Bible later, Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 21, that humans would continue to do evil things. Notice there, the Lord smelled the soothing aroma of the offering of Noah. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake. Although, although, notice, although, God says, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. You see, man's tendency will not change. Humans would continue to do evil things. Because the, the point is, is, before the flood and after the flood, and in 2020 and 2021, as long as this earth continues to stand, we still have freedom of choice. And we're thankful for that. Folks still had the freedom of choice, but you know what the other side of that coin is? When that is the case, we oftentimes make lousy choices. Man oftentimes makes poor choices. Not only that, look in your Bible at Genesis 9, verses 20 and 21. Noah, Noah the righteous one, Noah who by faith built an ark, Noah who walked with God, Noah himself was one of the evildoers. He was a husbandman, a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. And in verse 21, then he drank of the wine and was drunk and became uncovered in his tent. Good old Noah, walking with God, Noah was one of the evildoers as well. 
Look in verses 22 through 25 and we see that Noah's son was among the evildoers. After the COVID-19 confinement, we still live in a world of evil. John says as much in 1 John chapter 5 and verse number 19. The King James says the whole world lies in wickedness. The New King James says the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. We're very familiar with Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. After this pandemic, we still live in a world of evil. But God still has expectations for Christians. Let's look at those very quickly. And if you have your Bible, go with me to Ephesians chapter 5. God still has expectations for Christians, for His people. Number one, act like children of light. Act like children of light. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of light. Yes, we still live in a world of wickedness. No flood, no pandemic is going to get rid of it. We have to be the light of the world. God expects Christians to act like children of light. Number two, refuse and reprove darkness. Ephesians, excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Christians need to not only act like children of light, but refuse and reprove darkness. We still have work to do, especially when it comes to being Christians, serving the living God. And then number three, if you have your Bibles, you can look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and verse number 12. Number three, we need to present the light of the world. Present the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Yes, we still live in a world of darkness, but God expects Christians to act like children of light, to refuse and reprove darkness, and to present the light of the world. If I could for just a moment, makes uh, an application of something I think you'll remember. Do you remember September 11th, 2001? Do you remember the response of our country? Many people stood up and they vowed to serve God. They vowed to pray to God. More often they vowed to go to church services for a while after the September 11th tragedies. And they were obviously awful tragedies. Many people gave more thought to spiritual matters. But what happened after October and November and December in 2002 and 2003 and 2004? As is natural for many people, even after a terrible tragedy, they began to turn away. They began to go back to the sinful ways of the world. What about June 2020 or July? Will you give more thought to spiritual matters? Many people are doing the same thing. This is awful. This is tragic. Many people have lost their lives. Our country is suffering. And I am going to give more thought to spiritual matters. I hope you do. I really hope that you do. But I also hope that you stick with it past July or August or 2020 or 2021 as we were able to be together. Confinement is no fun. I think we can agree upon that. We do not like restrictions on our movements. It's frustrating to us. But Noah was confined too. And there are at least four things that he was able to take from the confinement that I think we can take as well. Knowing that we have an opportunity again to worship the Lord. Knowing that we are a blessed people. Knowing that God is still in control of the universe. And even knowing that there is still wickedness. That we have an opportunity to go forward as children of life. Where do we go from here? Well, it begins in the next few moments. We're about to sing this song of invitation to encourage you if you need to become a child of God that you would consider doing that. That you would hear the word. That you would believe the word. That Jesus is the Son of God. That you would repent of your sins. That you would confess Jesus as Lord. And be baptized for the remission of your sins. So that you can be added to the church by God. To begin to live faithfully. But as many of us know it's hard. And we do turn our backs. Just as many people did in 2001. And for all of time that the humans have been on this earth. We turn our back on God. Maybe you stand in need of God's second law part. Coming back to Him. Confessing your sin. Repenting of those sins. Allowing us to pray with you and for you. We are so thankful for this opportunity to be together to worship Him. We are thankful as well for this opportunity to encourage you. If you need to make a change in your life, you can do so now as we stand together and as we sing.